Mantras of our Divine Mother Make me worthy Body has one prayer It is always the same One prayer Make me worthy of knowing thee Make me worthy of serving thee Make me worthy of being thee I feel in myself a growing force But it is a new quality In silence and in contemplation Nothing is impossible with love and blessing, says our Divine Mother. A prayer for those who wish to serve the Divine. Our Divine Mother says, Glory to Thee, O Lord, who triumphed over every obstacle. Grant that nothing in us shall be an obstacle in thy word. Grant that nothing may retard thy manifestation. Grant that thy will may be done in all things and at every moment. We stand here before thee that thy will may be fulfilled in us in every element in every activity of our being, from our supreme heights to the smallest cells of the body. Grant that we may be faithful to Thee utterly and forever. We would be completely under Thy influence to the exclusion of every other. Grant that we may never forget to own towards Thee a deep, and intense gratitude. Grant that we may never squander any of the marvelous things that are Thy gifts to us at every instant. Grant that everything in us may collaborate in Thy work and all be ready for Thy realization. Glory to Thee, O Lord, Supreme Master of all realization. Give us a faith active and ardent, absolute and unshakable in Thy victory. From Prayers and Meditations from the Collective Works of Our Divine Mother, Volume 2, Date October 23rd, 1937. Next Topic Departure to Pondicherry via Chandranagar 1910 The middle of Feb It is late evening for Sham Pukur Lane, the office of Karma Yogin. A flight of stairs, a bare room, he is seated on the only cot. Around him are the faithfuls. The air is purposeful. Yet relaxed, there is laughter and mirth. Suddenly, a young staff member rushes in. The messenger carries a heavy burden today. The empire is preparing to strike with intrude born of desperation from two previous failures. Under the guise of law, darkness will attack light. Once again, the ancient battle to be fought again and again. The tip-off is from a high place police official. The government intends to search the Karmayogan office tomorrow and arrest him. The air was sucked out from the room. The danger had become real, present, immediate. The foretaste was in the mouth. Minds were numbered. Speech became a babel. He remained unmoved, utterly silent, without and within, awaiting the word. He received a sudden command from above. He received a sudden command from above to go to Chandranagar in French India. 
he obeyed the command at once for it was now his rule to move only as he moved by the divine guidance and never resist and depart from it he did not stay to consult with anyone the divine adesha the adhesion was spontaneous and instantaneous no pause or stutter no reasoning no planning no preparations and no favels the known the familiar were cast off in one swift act of unconditional surrender he rose from his seat and left the house never to return The first stop was to be a ghat on the Hooghly River. It was a walkable distance, a walk through fire, the ever-present CID surveillance teams, an unblinking, all-watching evil eye that beheld the most dangerous man in the empire. At all times, detection was but inevitable, and the consequence... Apprehension turned into mortal fear. The human spirits felt crushed. under the weight of recent hopelessness against the enormous systemic machinery of the hostile imperial power it seemed a lost battle that they waged except that he walked amongst them he went first with the navigator behind him two companions followed closely but at a certain distance the disconnected human train moved rapidly following the navigator through the maze of narrow lanes by lanes and alleys the strides became longer more rapid with every turn the human hearts beat faster and faster the nerves were taut the mouth was dry every face appeared a mask of the faceless enemy every footfall was a clasp of thunder every turn was a climax of suspense the journey appeared endless and then abruptly the river came into view they reached the ghat it was beyond belief and comprehension the impotency of the dark powers the absence of the cid teams the impossible had happened no explanations were needed none existed except that he walked amongst them that day at the ghat a common river boat was hired the navigator turned back his assignment was over the other two companions continued a lingering moment as if the land of calcutta held on to his feet and then he stepped into the boat calcutta receded in the background the immediate destination was known everything else was unknown it was the divine adventure a willing perilous dance with chance a solitary boat plying on a river in the night an up river journey through the heart of the dark empire the weight of time was felt in every heartbeat suddenly a lurch and a grounding sound the darkness seemed to close in like a suffocating blanket the boat was stuck in a sand bank the men got off and pushed they pushed and pushed until the boat was clear the boat was off again the wave of apprehension subsided for him there was only the rasa of adventure through time and space of the silver rain of light from the waxing moon of the playful waves sparkling underneath of the breeze that ruffled the hair of the rhythm of the boat of the music of the oars in the water for him it was a midnight river cruise time space fate danger river boat men stars all merging into an inner scene of delight an hour slowly passed and then another more hour passed more hour still passed finally the boat touched the banks of the shore chandernagar the night was not yet over but the first light of dawn was not far away one leg of the journey was now 
complete, one of his companions alighted and hastened to the chosen person with a request for a secret resistance for him. The refusal was unexpected. The insidious influence of darkness extended everywhere and the human faith flickered. He remained unmoved, armed with boundless patience. He waited in the boat for dawn to arrive. A few hours passed. A fortunate soul who had seen him earlier and heard of his speech, eager to serve, to play out a part in the Leela, arrived and accepted with a thrill and gratitude, the crowning fulfillment of lifetimes of being his host, led by the host a short boat ride and then on foot. The last leg of the journey, a climb up a row of stairs through a spinney to the host's dwelling, at last the place of secret residence. The journey was complete for now. The two companions, assured by him, started on the return journey in the hired boat, their hearts heavy with the parting, yet light with inner fulfillment, seated on an easy chair in the drawing room. He asked instead for a secret hideaway, for the tentacles of darkness spread everywhere, secret agents and spies of the empire would be out hunting with vulture eyes and bat ears for the precious one. The first hideaway was a storeroom for furniture in that very house. A thick layer of dust covered everything in it. Bats, spiders and other insects were co-inhabitants. A small portion on the floor was clean. He took a seat. A proper meal would compromise secrecy. A portion of the host's meal was shared. The play was not just a play. The hideaways had to be changed. Often a thatched hut, a garden house, a dilapidated shed near a Jagannatha temple, less frequented locations at the outskirts, moving under the cover of darkness. Only a handful of men knew of such matters. The play was not just a play. He remained unperturbed, almost oblivious. A complete awareness of practical realities was apparent, though the strategic communication via notes and pencil on scraps of paper continued through trusted members and messengers. As did the coordination of men and worldly affairs, all that was necessary was done intuitively. Yet it was a period of sadhana, intense and uninterrupted, a rich stream of spiritual experiences continued unabated at all hours, even, the, even in the company of other men. The external vision could merely discern a meditative state of silence or the yogi's fixed stare or feel in the presence a center of radiating peace or see in the face a reflection of divine bliss. Sometimes he spoke, revealing what he saw with open eyes, a stream of letters from Akashalipi, from him to Decipher, the forms of gods from realms beyond with messages, from him to discover. Sometimes he shared more in a rich discourse on various topics. A month and some weeks passed. Human minds were restless, planning for a change of location, when suddenly he heard the familiar voice within an Adesha, go to Pondicherry. He conveyed the command to the host. His cousin in Calcutta came to know via a letter. A tense orchestration now began of men, resources, events and circumstances. A complex interplay of forces, a grim tussle between light and darkness. The operation required utmost secrecy. The cousin was under constant surveillance by the CID. A network of trustworthy associates emerged. Each did their part. None had the complete view. The cousin was the hub of operations, an instrument of planning and strategy. The preference of sea voyage over a long overland journey by train to make interception difficult once the ship had set sail. The selection of a French ship SS Duplex to thwart British action abroad the ship 
through lack of jurisdiction over a foreign board the booking of tickets from calcutta to colombo to confuse the enemy about the destination the avoidance of real names during travel and the usage of assumed identities based on real persons randomly chosen from a list of subscribers of sanjeevani newspaper to delay discovery as long as possible every choice every move was inspired the logistics too were planned to the minutest detail the cousin prepared two trunks and entrusted to a helper for safe keeping the same helper was asked to purchase two tickets ss duplex calcutta to colombo first april second class a private cabin with two birds was booked Another associate was sent to Pondicherry in advance with a letter of introduction from him to arrange for a suitable residence with local help. The host of Chandanagar planned as precaution to change boats before the Rendua with the boat from Calcutta. Unknown to human actors, the future held the unexpected Some plans were going to fail. 31st March 1910, Chandanagar at dawn. The down river journey began. The first step went according to the plan. He was transferred to another boat where two new companions took over. The journey continued. They reached the Rendo point, but the boat from Calcutta was not there. They waited. until they could wait no more and then travel further to chandrapal ghat hoping to meet the boat from calcutta it was not there either the plans were unraveling fast there was confusion indecision apprehension only one option remained to find his cousin but that would need a dash into the city into the very center of the imperial state through an invisible mesh of cid police of red turbans of spies and farmers and loyalists into a sticky dark web the most dangerous man in the empire with an arrest warrant awaiting his return newspapers filled with speculations of his whereabouts he would ride on a horse carriage in broad daylight through the streets of calcutta the divine adventure recklessly supreme a closed carriage was hired he stepped into it the journey began the companions were as if sitting on nails he was unperturbed as always the carriage wound its way and reached the spot he stayed inside whilst the companions went to his cousin sensing the grave danger the cousin bade them return to chandrapal ghat and wait there the carriage turned back for the ghat meanwhile the men from calcutta after missing the rendo had returned to the cousin earlier and had been and sent to the ship to collect the steam trunks as soon as they returned the cousin asked them to proceed to the guard and meet up with the carriage perhaps the threats could be rejoined but there was more bad news the mandatory medical examinations for passengers was over he and his companion had missed it so it appeared to reason none knew of police scrutiny during medical examination and that detection of a public figure like him would have been almost certain but the unseen hand had averted the danger and opened the door to the safer path passengers could get the medical certificate from the medical officer by way of private exam at the doctor's residence and then board the ship as late as 10:30 pm another unsought blessing the porter they had hired was familiar with the doctor's residence the two assistants started off one final time they reached the ghat and found him and the two companions in the closed carriage the porter too was found a way of relief surged through them through a maze of events and hostility of time things were miraculously falling into place now it was a race against time the porter urged them not to delay but he had to be briefed of the assumed identities of the ostensible reason for the trip that he was a malaria patient out on a health cruise the next stop was the doctor's residence it was 9:30 after a wait of 30 minutes the two passengers were called in into the doctor's chamber another 15 minutes passed they emerged with the certificate they hurried back to the ship the porter went up the gangplank with the luggage he and the rest followed 
In the reserved cabin, his co-passengers started making their beds, invoking the humdrum to bear the magnitude of the moment. It was time to say goodbye to their deity. One man bowed with folded hands, another put his forehead on his feet. Although, although they left with a heaviness of emotions, there was a lightness in the spirits deep within. The next morning, 1st of April, SS Duplex sailed out of Calcutta Harbour. He was on board. Light has prevailed as it always did. The land of Bengal had thrilled at the sacred tread of his feet. On one last time, the curtain had fallen. On the political side of action, a quiet end to the magnificent chapter. But another land's ancient weight was coming to an end. On 4th of April 1910, on 4th of April 1910, the ship drew into Pondicherry Harbour and dropped anchor. He set foot in Pondicherry. The prophecy was fulfilled. The Uttara Yogi had arrived. He is our Lord Sri Aurobindo. The long struggle both by our Lord Sri Aurobindo and our Divine Mother to reach to Pondicherry to enlighten all the souls on earth to transform life into life divine to get ready for the supramental manifestation blessings to all the children of the divine mother from the divine mother our divine mother says remain in entirely in the consciousness of the divine and continue the sadhana with love and blessings, says our Divine Mother.